Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and today we're going to be checking out the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimates Sewer Samurai Leonardo figure from Super 7. Yeah, that's right, my friends. It has been a while since I have taken a look at one of the Ultimates figures for the team and T-Line. Uh, but I'll be honest, this is a wave I was particularly excited for because of Sewer Samurai Leonardo. When we think back to the Vintage Turtles line, we all remember how many variations of the four turtles there were in that line. But I think I speak for everyone when I say we've all got a soft spot for Sewer Samurai Leonardo. Uh, he was among the first of the variants in that line and definitely one of the best. Uh, this particular wave is my favorite. Space Cadet Raphael is my personal favorite, but I've always loved Super Sewer Samurai Leonardo. So when I found out that Super 7 was including these, I was excited to get an updated version of that classic variant. So here he is, same style window box packaging, showing all the accessories, alternate head in there. When we rotate it around to the backside, you can see we've got a bio for Sewer Samurai Leonardo as well. So why don't we go ahead and get this guy pulled out of the box and we will get a closer look at that figure. All right, we got our figure outside of the packaging. If I bring in the tape measure here, you can see, oh, he's about six and a half inches tall. He's pushing towards seven with those little horns that are sticking off of the top of the helmet there. Um, man, I got a lot that I want to talk about with this guy because at first glance, pretty cool looking, but I started really, I don't know, I feel like I'm getting very nitpicky with this guy, so you can let me know if you think I'm overly nitpicky. Uh, I will say, a lot of colors here. I do like to see how colorful this figure is, uh, but one of the areas that I'm a little disappointed in is that the colors just feel a little flat to me. Um, the gold specifically that is used on his helmet and on his torso feels like it should be a bit shinier than what it is. Now you can see the way my lights are hitting it, it is a bit shiny, but I don't know. It feels flat overall. It's almost more of like this flat gold than it is like this shiny bright gold that you kind of think about when looking at the vintage toy. Uh, the vintage toy, it was like a deeper gold, but it, it had much more of a shine to it than this does. And I actually feel the same way about the reds. Like, I don't know, that red just feels very flat. I don't know. It's just something about it doesn't stand out to me the way I feel like it should. Now you can see he's got the blue uh, wrapped around the turtle shell there, kind of blue going around the outside. For the most part, that does look clean. There's a little bit of some blotchiness kind of around the sides there. I also noticed a little bit of blotchiness on the bandana going around the front, um, but not too bad. It's just interesting because that blue feels so like chalky. I don't know. It's It's got a different feel to it than the rest of the figure. So something about the colors on here, like, I don't know. I feel like they should have mesh together a little bit better than they do, but maybe that's me. Let's go ahead and talk about articulation on this guy though, because this is another point that I really, really want to bring up. So first of all, we got that typical ball joint on the head. So it rolls all the way around, looks left and right, up and down, same kind of motion there. The arms go upwards at the shoulders, though I will say that these uh, little pieces on his shoulders, the armor plates, they hinder the mov movement. So you can see this is as far as the arms can come out upwards. They can move forwards and backwards. You got uh, swivels at the bicep, you got a single bend at the elbow, swivels at the wrist, and hinges at the wrist. Nothing in the turtle shell torso there, but then you got the ball joints at the thighs, so the legs can go outwards, forwards, backwards. They swivel there at those ball joints. You got a single joint at the knee, and then the feet have the joints that allow them to go up and down, pivot up and down, and then rock side to side. Uh, very flat-footed, of course, because he's got these big boxy sandals, but with those nice uh, uh, rocker joints there, you could still get some good flat-footed poses. Now, what I want to point out is just how loose these hips are, and man, I feel like this has been an issue all the way through the TMNT Ultimates line, and at Series 5, I really feel like this shouldn't be an issue anymore. Let me kind of show you this. Now, you can see he's standing fine. When I stand him on the shelf or on a table here, he is standing up fine. So the joints are holding in place. However, this dude feels very wobbly. Do you see the way his body is wobbling around? I mean, look at that. That's not cool. <laughs> 
I don't want my figures to do this. I don't want them to feel so loose and wobbly. Just very, very weak joints at the hips. Um, and I would just really, really like to see Super 7 get that fixed. I don't know. Is that by design? Because I feel like we've had this problem all the way through this line. And this figure here just really feels particularly wobbly. So far, he's standing fine. I'm not having any issues with the hips like giving out or anything when I'm posing him around. But, I mean, I don't know. Will I eventually? Look at that. Woohoo! Yeah, so I'm definitely not satisfied with how loose the hips still are on these figures. We got a lot of accessories to look at here, though. So, first of all, no shortage of interchangeable hands. You'll notice that out of the package, he's got like these wide open posed hands. So we also have a pair of closed fists. We also have a pair of kind of curled fingers, open hands. And then we've got our gripping hands. And it's easy to swap these out. You just kind of give a tug on the hand. They are very tight. Wow, very tight on there. Uh, usually uh, the way these work, like the first time around, they're extra tight. But once you do that once or twice, it does kind of loosen it up a little bit there. We're going to put the gripping hands in just so we can kind of mess around with the accessories here. So he does come with uh, the solid unpainted weapons on the sprue. This is an homage to the vintage toy line. Uh, at this point, I'm kind of surprised that they're still doing this. However, some of the recent waves that they've been putting up for pre-order no longer include these. So it does look like this is going to be cut. Uh, particularly, I think they're a fun nod. Um, but I don't ever use them. <laughs> Do you guys use these? So we also get all of those exact same weapons fully painted. And Leo has a ton of them here. So he comes with one, two, three swords as well as a short sword. So four blades all together. Uh, these are all painted very nice. You got green and black on the hilt. The blades are a very shiny silver. I wish the gold was as shiny as the silver is on these blades because these blades look very, very nice. Uh, in addition to that, we also have two of the little ninja stars, also with that same silver paint deco. We've got three of these little throwing daggers. So again, lots and lots of weapons to choose from. And then we've even got these little hand claws, which are pretty cool. So you can see he came with a lot more weapons than the vintage version of this figure did here. Um, of course, he's got some more signature pieces here as well. Like he does come with the shield and this time around, super Super 7 fully painted it, which is pretty cool. The vintage one was solid green, so Super 7 kind of chose some colors to put on there. Um, not too bad. The green looks a little muddy, and I think that's because there's actually like a black wash in there, but it just looks a little dirty. But otherwise, it's kind of cool to see this fully painted. You can see it's just got a handle uh, on the underside, so you can get his hand to grip it, and he can hold onto the shield just like the vintage toy. We also have the sword sheath. Now, this is done a little bit differently than the vintage as well, because the vintage just had a plastic strap. You would just, like, hang it over his arm. This one has, like, a stretchy cord here, which is pretty cool. And uh, any of these long swords will actually fit in there, it looks like. Uh, probably the short one, too. Is the short one better? Yeah, no, the, the short one seems a little looser. So I definitely think this is meant for the longer swords. And then this is kind of cool because you can stretch this around the figure. You can do it across the back there like that if you want to. You'll also notice that he's got two uh, holsters off on the side there. So you can sheath two more of his swords if you want to do the two katanas or the short sword there as well. He's also got one more uh, slot on the back, which you could put like the knife there, the short sword. But also this is going to be for his other accessory, which is his little samurai flag. Now, this is another accessory that comes straight off the vintage toy. Uh, but this is really cool because, again, fully painted this time. And the vintage one was a sticker. So it would wrap around there. It's torn off. It's missing a lot from the vintage one. Uh, they actually went with like this little cloth, uh, like fabric flag, which is really nice. And you can see it's got little uh, tabs on there. And then there's little hooks on this. So you can hang this off of there. Now, I run into a problem a lot. I feel like this bottom hook should actually have the loop at the top instead of the bottom because I can't get this one to stay on. It always pops off the top rungs. And then when I put it back on the top hooks, it pops off. You see what I mean? Like, I feel like they put that hook on upside down. I feel like it would have stayed better if it was the other way around. Now, of course, Leo can hold on to the flag if you want to, but also that's what this little 
uh, notches on the back of his belt. So that way you can have him hanging his little flag off the back like a samurai. If I can get this thing to stay on these little hooks. There you go. Now we got his little flag, his little banner hanging off of the back of the figure there. Few more fun accessories. He also comes with a slice of pizza with a very metallic blue anchovy on there. Look how shiny that anchovy is. Again, another case where this is very shiny and I wish the gold was that shiny. I'm not sure why that gold is so toned down. And we do have an alternate head that has a mask over his face. Now this is pretty cool because the vintage figure did not actually have that little face mask, that face mouth guard. Uh, you know, I remember the Turtles 3 figures did have those little mouth guards. So this is just kind of a fun extra bonus. And as you can see, I was able to pop the head right off the ball joint and I can pop the new one on in its place. All right, guys, it's comparison time. So here's a look at the brand new Sewer Samurai Leonardo action figure standing alongside the vintage action figure counterparts. Uh, again, just looking at these side by side, you can see the inspiration from the vintage one brought to life in the new one. However, like the vintage one, even after all these years, still just has a little bit more of that metallic to the gold that I really would have liked to see translated to this new figure from Super 7. So there you go, my friends. That is a look at the new Sewer Samurai Leonardo action figure from the folks over at Super 7. Very mixed feelings on this one because I love the design and I do think the sculpt work on this is very nice. He comes with a ton of accessories, probably too many accessories because I don't know what I'm going to do with all of them, but still a lot of accessories, which is definitely a cool thing. Uh, but it definitely gets big minuses for the paint deco, specifically the lack of metallics in the gold and that incredibly loose articulation in the hips. Uh, I am pretty disappointed by that, which makes me disappointed in this figure overall. And that's a shame because I was really excited for this one. So Series 5 is shipping right now. Super 7 has them and they should be going out and ending up in your mailboxes if you pre-order this guy. So keep a lookout. Thank you guys so very much for watching. And until next time.